QuickBooks Online 2022 Rental Income Invoice Receive Payment and Deposit. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with our 30-day free trial. Holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125% currently in the home page. Otherwise known as the Get Things Done page in the... business view as compared to the accounting view if you wanted to change to the accounting view it's something you can do by going to the cog up top and switching to the accounting view down below we will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view let's open up a few tabs we're going to right click on the tab up top to do so duplicate it back to the tab to the left right click on it again duplicate it again Back to the tab to the left one more time, right clicking on it, duplicating it again. As that is thinking, gonna jump back on over to the sample company just to note where the reports are located, which is on the left hand side, reports. If I go back then to the business view, reports are located in the business overview. Currently in the second tab, we're gonna be opening up our favorite report. We're in the reports area, closing the hamburger. That being the balance sheet, the big balance sheet, opening it up and ranging the changing up top from 0101 to 22 to run it, and then tab to the right, tab to the right, going into the business overview again, this time closing the handbook and going down to the P&L profit and loss income statement. Changing the ranging. Let's do this with a 010122 to 022822. Switching things up and then hit the drop down here. And let's take a look at the monthly, month by month running it so that we can see the January activity, the January activity, the February activity, and the total. We're currently in the month of February entering data at this time. Tab to the right, going down to the business overview let's open up as well the p uh the the trial balance the trial balance that's what i'm trying to say trial balance I haven't seen it for a while so i'm a little out of practice with it closing the handbook doing the range change up top from 010122 to 123122 run it <music> holding control scrolling up just a bit go back to the first tab and Prior presentations, we imagined a scenario that we're going to be selling some rental equipment in our Get Great Guitars shop, and that's going to be our band set. So we went into the Get Paid and Paid area. We went into the products and services. We set up our service items, imagining that people are going to rent band set, the standard band set, having then a couple guitars, a drum set and uh and an amplifier and then they can add some added stuff if they want to this is located by the way if you were in the other view the accounting view in the sales area and products and services and then we went and had customer number five come in and request that they want a to rock and roll one of these re weekends and so they requested so we're going to go into the get paid paid area and the customers tab now closing up the hamburger and we set up an invoice. So if we go down or we set up an estimate, I'm sorry, an estimate for customer number five, as we can see here, here's our estimate. And then we said we want a down payment to reserve the equipment because we got like a bunch of people that want to rock and roll with our guitars and amplifiers. So if you want to reserve it, you got to give us a down payment. The payment needs to be down. So they gave us a down payment of the of the 200, which down here looks nice and easy to tie out because it's unapplied at this point in time. So when the, they come in, we can then say, okay, now we're going to finish the sale, making the estimate into an invoice and then possibly applying out the $200 to it, collecting the rest of it. We might want to have a, another down payment as the rental equipment is out or something like that or hold on to their their, you know, their first child or something to make sure they give our equipment back maybe <laughs> something like that but uh in this case we're going to go ahead and uh, say we're going to create the invoice so now we're imagining customer number five comes in and they're like all right we need our we need our band equipment that we asked for that we reserved we can either create the invoice over here with the estimate or if i was for example to make a new invoice up top for customer number five like so 
like so, and then say this was customer number five, then QuickBooks is gonna say, hey, I'm paraphrasing, we've got this estimate. Do you wanna make this invoice from the estimate you made? And we're gonna say, yes, QuickBooks, that is super helpful. I appreciate the fact that you're able to do that because that's amazing. And so if we go through here, we're gonna say there's the 227, everything pulled in from the estimate. So that looks good. Why doesn't this close out? Close out, carrot. And then down here, we've got no sales tax applied. You can see the little links because it pulled over from the estimate and they wanted, and we could just be like, yeah, that we've got your, you got your band set, which has got the two guitars, the drum set and the amplifier. And then you got your two added guitars that you can have. And then we've got the super, the four more amplifiers so that you can really be a super loud. And so there it is. Now notice they're gonna say, hey, I applied the $200 out here, but we don't see it calculated here. But if I close this, I'm gonna save it and close it. QuickBooks will usually automatically apply. So I'm gonna go back into my customer area and then notice that they automatically applied the payment out. So if I go back into the invoice, it now says it's partially paid. So I can go back into it. And then if I wanted to print it out at this point in time and give it to the customer or send it out, it has now the, the item at the bottom of the $200 that the amount that's received. So this is the amount that was charged. This is the amount that we received that has been applied out. And this is the, the balance that is due. What's this gonna do when we, when we uh, record it? It's going to be increasing the accounts receivable because it's an invoice for customer number five. It's gonna increase it by the 2,260, not the 2,060 because the $200 has already been recorded. It's already on our financial statements. So this stuff at the bottom isn't really part of our financial transaction. It's for the good of the, of the, of the customer. It's not part of the transaction we're making. The transaction we're making is the 2,260 which will increase the accounts receivable and then net against that payment that we already received resulting in a balance still owed to us of the 2060 here. And then the other side is going to go to the rental income driven by the items. No tax, no, there's no inventory, there's no cost of goods sold because we're not selling inventory. So let's close this back out. Now notice that they automatically applied out this payment. Let's see what that looks like if I go into this payment. You'll recall that when we made the payment, it wasn't tied out to any invoice because there was no invoice. So QuickBooks said, hey, we got an invoice that you can tie the payment out to now and they automatically tied it out. If they did not do that, we could go in here and basically tie out uh, the payment to, to the invoice. So now let's close this out and let's take a look at what happened in uh, the financial statements going over to the big balance sheet. Let's run it to make sure we got fresh stuff that we're working with. And we said we got the AR, the A to the R, the A slash R. So then it's down here on customer five, the 2260. That looks good. Let's going to go back up top. Back then to our report. The other side is going to be on the income statement. Let's go to the income statement and make sure it's fresh. Running it to freshen it up. And now we, we've got it in our new uh, line item in equipment rental. We didn't have any last month. We got it this month because we started a new, a new uh, revenue stream right here. That's what we did. So there we have it. There's our items there for invoice uh, 1023. Going back up, back to the report. If we wanted to make the sub ledger, which would tie out to the accounts receivable, let's do that. Right clicking on the tab to the right to do it. Let's duplicate the tab because I don't want to remove my trial balance. I want that here too. I want all my reports. Let's add another one. Go to the reports on the left hand side. Close up the hamburger. Scroll down to the section where people owe you money. And we're looking at the customer balance summary, which in essence is the sub ledger report of the accounts receivable. We're going to do the date change because I'm working in the future here. Custom date at 12. What did I highlight the whole 12 31 2 2 run it and then we can see with uh with the customer number five did i did i hit the summary i'd rather have the detail hold on a second i'm going back in here i want the detail report i want to see stuff 
happening, not just the ending balance down here. So we're going to who owes you. Let's go to the customer balance detail report. Sorry about that. Let's do it again. Custom date, working in the future, 123122, run it. And then they're just showing me the invoices. I want to see the payments too. So I'm going to, I'm going to customize this report filters down here. Let's do some filtering and this filter. I want to see all the activity, all the stuff that's going on around here. And so then if I go down to the customer number five, there's the activity. So now we've got the prepayment and the invoice ties out to it. And again, notice how how nice that works out from an, a bookkeeping standpoint. It, it's, it still records this negative amount, which isn't great for financial reporting standpoints, but from a bookkeeping standpoint, once I, I am able to see that it's outstanding, I see a payment that's gonna be applied out automatically by the system and it links to the invoice beautifully and everything ties out nicely. So if I go back to the first tab, I can see that here too, by going to the customer tab, I can close up the hand buggy and if I go down, I could see everything. Everything looks like it should here. I got the estimate that happened, the payment uh, that was happening. It was unapplied before. Now I made the invoice. It's applied back out. Everything looks uh, nice from a bookkeeping standpoint, even though you're ending up with that negative receivable when you have the payment as opposed to a positive liability, a problem you can change and fix by simply doing an adjusting entry periodically at the end of the month or the end of the year. So if I then go back to let's let's uh, finish this thing out. And by that, I mean, let's imagine that we're now going to receive uh, the payment and then deposit it. So I'm going to go back up top and say, let's hit the let's go to the first tab back up top. And we, we could say we're going to receive the payment. Obviously, right here, I can hit receive payment or I could go up top hit the plus button and then say we're going to receive the payment, receive the payment. And so I'm going to select that item. Customer number five is going to be pulled up and then QuickBooks should be able to pull up the invoice down below. There it is. We're going to, let's just make this on the 28th. Now I'm just going to say cash for practice purposes and it's going to go into the clearing account, which used to be called undeposited funds, which is now they put in payment to deposit. Same thing. We're going to then check the invoice that we have down below, which was the total amount of 2260 originally, but only 2060 remaining. That's what we're going to imagine we're receiving at this point in time in the epic story of Get Great Guitars. So this is going to be increasing the clearing account payment to deposit the other side, then decreasing the accounts receivable and decreasing the sub ledger for customer number five save it and close it and then let's go to the tab to the right tab to the right and run it and then we're going to say we've got now the clearing account which used to be called undeposited funds now called payment to deposit now should have another another thing in it notice the trend that's going up it goes back to zero goes up or down goes back to zero and so on and so forth because it's a clearing account now it went up by that 2060, which will be going back down shortly because we will be depositing it into the bank. The other side should be decreasing the A to the R, otherwise known as the accounts receivable A slash R. R it's going down. We're gonna see that there's customer number five. That looks good. Let's go back up top and go back to our report. And then nothing happening on the income statement from this transaction. If we go to the the uh, sub report for the customer balance detail report and run it and take a look at customer number five, we see the activity that's been happening here. We had the first payment and then and then uh, the invoice, then the invoice happened and then the second payment. I'm in the wrong area, aren't I? Customer number five is up here. You've got the first payment and then the invoice happened and then the second payment. So everything looks like it's it's tying out there. If I go back to the first tab and then I close up the hamburger, we're in customer number five. We can see the activity here. I'm gonna hold down control, scroll down just a bit. So now we had the estimate that we made the first payment for and then we invoiced and then we've got the second payment and everything, every, the story is pretty, pretty clear just with regards to the documents 
that are being used, the forms that are being used, if you're familiar with those forms, although the order is a little bit different because of the prepayment. Okay, let's make the deposit now. Let's go to the balance sheet tab and say, now we've got this money in the clearing account, <clears throat> which is the payments to deposit. And we, we think it's going to hit the bank just with that same number because we're just going to take this money to the bank with one deposit. So let's put that in the bank. We're going to go then to the, to the first tab, ham, boogie, and plus button, and then bank deposit. Ham, boogie, plus button to the bank deposit. Cash account, let's just put it in there as the 28th. We're just going to check off that one deposit we need to make. We expect it to then hit our books for the amount of 2060 in the cash account as well as the bank statement, making the reconciliation easy to do. So let's go ahead and save it and close it and then take a look at the final step that we have just made by going to the big balance sheet. Big balance sheet. So we're going to go then into cash. And cash should have this deposit that has now been made. We have made a deposit. I made it from scratch. So we're going to go down here. There is our deposit for 2060 going back up top. And the other side, the other side of the equation or the T account is in the payments to deposit back down to zero. This is the clearing account, formerly known as undeposited funds, but they got a name, it's got a name change. People got mad at undeposited funds a lot because it's kind of confusing. So they thought, well, maybe we'll just change the name. If I change my name, no one will be mad at me anymore because I'm confusing the account, I'm a confusing account. So it goes back down to zero, just like it should, cleared back out because it's a clearing account. Not a temporary account, mind you, but a clearing account, which is different. They're different, those things. Let's go back to the, tr so that's that. Let's go to the trial balance and just see where we stand at this point in time. Gonna, gonna run it again, run it again. And uh, this is where we stand. So if you stand like with the same numbers on your left leg and your right leg, your debits and your credits, then that's good. If not, Try changing the date range. It's often a date range issue, and we'll be looking at the transaction detailed report at the end, which is a great tool for diagnosing any differences.